Welcome to WTF is Web3, where we untangle the uncertainties of Web3 technologies. Be sure to check out the show notes for more information, giveaways, and ways to stay in touch. You're also going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and our private group so you don't miss out on exclusive content, freebies, and much more. All right, What's so now- up, Casey? Welcome back to another What? The F is Web three. Are we are we gonna call it what? Are we gonna say the WTF? Words? No, I like WTF. I just sort of rolled WTF. with the what. And just, it's just it's more it. it's you know it's more syllables when we say it's WTF. I I hate uh, adjectives that are more syllables than the the full thing. But in any case, super scammy out there right now. It's like uh, so scammy. Ninety nine percent chance of scam with scattered <laughs> scams. <laughs> It's a looking like scam out there today, people. Scattered, scattered hacks with a ninety-nine percent chance of scams. Make Aside sure from to the, pack your scambrella. I mean, it's it's coming everywhere. Like the the NFT yeah. space, the the NFT space in particular seems more scammy it's than right even crypto. Maybe that's because I'm in more discords, and they just like. But between like bombing your dms and getting people we mentioned this in the in the discord episode but like that's one thing if you guys don't know you got to be aware anybody dming you just ignore it yeah they're, if they're you're probably getting a dm game. in discord and you're not expecting it it's not like you said hey i'm going to dm you or hey open your dms because i'm going to send you something it's a scam yeah. It's somebody trying to impersonate somebody. Never believe that you're going to get on a white list or you're going to get a special mint leak from somebody that randomly sends you a DM the second you join a Discord server. It's a scam. There are scams. There's scams on Twitter, but it's like the NFT space in particular. So let's discuss some of the scams that we witnessed, how to keep an eye out for them. So that's the first one. We'll, we'll go over the DMs. Anybody DMing you in Discord, be very incredulous. Um, if a lot of them, what I've seen is like, some of them are fast, man. Like that one group that I joined that you've turned me on to the, uh, the yawning one of the apes. Ones? Yeah. The apes. Yeah. One of, one of the apes yawning apes. If that doesn't exist, let's do that. Um, <laughs> it was, it was some of well, the high society <laughs> apes. As, as soon as I joined that discord, I had five bots bombing my DM. I've never had that before. And then as soon as I posted a question, some bot, some they weren't bots they were people and they would dm me in that discord acting like they were support staff yeah and i, I know enough to mess with them but other people don't and they are getting they scammed don't. one dude in one of the money. rooms was like there goes all my eth he literally yeah. lost all of his eth because he was having an issue he mentioned it in a general chat a scammer dm'd him saying he was support got his address and i don't know what else they need or they get from you because i don't give it to them but the guy was like, there goes all my ETH. And I was just like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. And I was just like, you freaking noob. But yeah, there's there's a lot of like really shitty stuff out there. They do that. They'll come out and just come out of the woodworks after you. They'll they'll like mimic your little your little channel icon, your server icon, and make it look like it's that server. So it'll pop up and hoping that you just think it's part of the server. You're new to Discord. You don't know what's going on. Their and name might have it. support in it or something like that. So you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. No. Second, you get in a Discord server. Go up to that the main little little bar there for them. Click the three dots and just turn off the DMs. There's yeah. no reason to get a DM. Any legitimate server host is not going to DM you. They're going to probably have constantly reminding a bot that's just like, turn off DMs, turn off DMs, turn off DMs because it's it's a scam. It's a scam. If yeah. it if it doesn't feel right, do not click it. Do not go through it. Eighty percent of the time, it's a scam. Yeah. And um, there's so actually April 1st, which is April Fool's. So who knows what what's true or what's not. But April 1st is today that we're filming this, recording this. And there was a big hack that went through Discord just today. There was uh, a hack for the ticket tool. So a lot of times when you're in some of these servers and you have an issue, if it's with your mint, if it's just with, you know, getting access to something, you'll go and you, you hit open a ticket and somebody from the team will respond to you. Well, that had a hack. So there was a bit of a, a leak there. So you got to go through and deactivate it. And then same thing, there was a- um, The CAPTCHA? The CAPTCHA. I yeah, saw the there captcha. was at least three or four of the different bots or apps or whatever there are. It's If you're in Discord, you're probably getting the notifications if you got a halfway decent group because everyone's sharing it. But um, yeah, it's 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 a hack. I don't, you think it's the Russians? They said there's going to be- the It's always, it's always the, the Russians. Russians. Russia, Russia, Russia. It's the Russians. 
Such a good Russia, scapegoat. Russia, Russia. They got those weird letters. You know, it's always like, those letters. Yeah, they're no, fighting bears. Still, they're crazy people. The letters look kidding. like somebody fighting a bear. Like, there's there's something yeah. weird going on there. They got violent uh, letters. It's a violent language. It's almost like German's the only language that seems more violent. Just like whatever you say, there's no beauty. You're like German poetry oh, yes. is like scary. I I'll be honest. Just, if somebody was speaking German and someone was speaking Russian and they were doing it with a neutral accent, I would have no clue which language they were saying. Oh, uh, Russia, Russian and like Ukrainian, like has that like it's like the but, but that's the voice. accent. So you're doing yeah, the voice. I'm but even their voice changes with the accent. It's like part of it. It's like it's like Irish. Irish, your voice goes up like an octave. It's like ah, oh, how's that going for you? Blah, 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 blah. And like your yeah, normal like English voice, voice is like if you typed oh, it into stage. the computer and you had the computer speak it. I don't. I couldn't tell the difference. But we digress. We do digress often. We dig that should be the name of the podcast. We digress. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> uh, but going back to scams. So we've got the Discord bot scams or whatever that's hitting us now. But even before that, we got the DM scams. And then the other thing that's going on that I'm seeing a lot on Twitter is people are buying verified Twitter accounts. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. Then they're changing the name to a blah, 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 dot ETH handle on twitter is it the handle that's the name or is the handle the at whatever they the, the name not the at blah 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 because you can't change that the, I don't yeah the name it. that you can change like the viewable name not the not name you at. can change they're changing it to a dot eth which if you don't know dot eth is very um synonymous with web3 type of person and then they'll put up a board ape logo pfp which is obviously just a jpeg so you click on it and it's not a verified nft but they'll put something up there to make you think oh this person is someone in the board ape society or someone who's in nft and then they'll tag you in a post with a bunch of other people recently the uh, board apes just did ape coin so everyone who was holding a board ape nft got 10,000 ape coins. And though the value of those is like already bounced between like, I think it's like 12 something now is like 13 to $9 somewhere around there. So there's value to these coins. And a lot of the, the, the shticks that I've seen is they're saying in celebration of us getting the ape coin, we're giving them away. Congratulations to mm -hmm. the winners. And they'll tag you in it. I was tagged in one of those. It, I've been tagged in like a dozen. And then, you know, some of those poor schmucks are going to go through the DMs and say, hey, I won. What do I do? And that's when they get their informa your information from you. And um, I don't know how, where the market is for selling a verified account. It's very, it's not easy to get a verified account. And I see that, baby. That's a utility. You could sell that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Um, too bad Twitter is web two, not web three. But um, yeah, that's, that's another one of the scams out there. It's just... It's ripe for it. Uh, what's what's another scam you've heard of? Yeah, so I was targeted for a weird scam. Um, so FTX, you're from the FTX, the exchange. It's a it's a US exchange. I, I think it's based in the They Bahamas. had Super Bowl ads, didn't they? They're pretty big. They have Super Bowl ads. They had the Tom Brady one where he's like, ah, oh, I got another 10 years about this. We talked about it. Uh, and so their CEO, Sam Bankman Freed, he uh, he's like a big Miami guy. They own the rights to the like the, the stadium that the Miami Heat play and everything like that. So if you haven't been following, I'm like super pro anything Miami, South Florida. So that's attracted me to FTX. Well, I got a message, a, a DM in I think Twitter, my Twitter account, maybe even been LinkedIn, from Brett Harrison, the president of FTX. And I was like, oh shit, cool. Brett Harrison's reaching out to me. What's this guy up to? And it was the weirdest small talk. It was just like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, doing good, Brett. <laughs> You're proud of you guys for that raise because they just had a, another crazy fundraise. And he was uh, like, what raise? No, he, he's like, oh yeah, cool, thanks. He's like, how's trading going? And I'm like, thumbs up. It's all it's all roses. Uh, and then he just kept doing weird small talk. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this dude's just coming on to me or something like that. Like, I guess I'm in this guy's wheelhouse. And <laughs> And then uh, a couple of days go by, and I, I remember telling Nicole, my wife, I'm like, I, I, I think I got an. I think I'm going to have to cheat guy. on you. How rigid is I, I this whole marriage this. thing? And she's like, work it. Just, just do what you got to do. You get a good in there. I don't know what the 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 vic was on my part. I don't know what I was seeking, but I don't know what he was seeking. It turned out he was just some con artist guy 
they somebody got wind of it and his account got deactivated. I don't know where he was going with it. He never asked me for anything. He never tried to get my account information. Just a weird, really targeted scam that I was the uh, the target of. It's a long con. <laughs> I guess the long con. The that's, long con. See that one is um that's the trickiest one because that one, it, it, so it was actually his account. It wasn't a fake account. No, it was a fake account, but oh, it, oh, okay. it wasn't a verified account. But he's not that well known of a guy. You know, he's not the CEO. He's the how president. many followers like, did it have? I don't know, over a thousand, I think. So something a legitimate number. Yeah, more than me. If, if it's if it's a nobody guy, I mean, people know who he is, but he's not like the figurehead of the company. You know, he's not he's not the CEO. He's not the founder. He's not the Elon Musk. No, he's not Sam. Sam is like this wild looking young. He looks like who you'd picture to be this. this is guy that the that dude who did the uh, like the congressional hearings or something? Sam, he, he probably did. You would right. He has like this big like Afro almost thing. Yeah. So that's Sam. He's he's the CEO. He looks like your tech billionaire guy. Yeah. Whereas this guy, Brett, like he just looks like a kind of a nerdy finance guy. And he's, he's, you know, he's the number two. He's the president, not the CEO. So that's that's a good target to uh, to go after. Because that's the other thing. These guys are obviously going after followers of legit accounts because they're going to be like, okay, well, if they're following this NFT project, these guys are pretty buried into the NFT world. They're going to recognize that .eth address as me being buried into it. They're going to recognize my board Ape or my CryptoPunk or whatever else, PFP as like another validator they have good their bios are good they'll have links so like ceo of yeah. whatever cto of this and you're like oh wow this cto nobody knows who the cto is so even if he had a picture of himself up there you wouldn't be able to tell and uh they're they're good some other scams off twitter have been the the bidding scams there's a couple actually there's there's one that i oh yeah go into that i'm, I'm gonna save this one for last but one of the okay. the the best ones is Bidding in different currencies. You want to take that one? Um, the bid, oh, yeah, yeah. So this was the, you're talking about the board Ape? Yeah, that yeah, just recently so happened. I, I wouldn't even call this a scam so much as it's just something to be aware of because this is legitimate. Like people know it's out there. It's not like anyone's hiding anything from you. And so recently you had um, somebody go out and just put out bids for the board a yacht club uh, nft and so what you do on OpenSea is some of them are offered for price and some of them are offered where you can like just bid on it you put something out there usually it's in a wrapped eth which is the same value as eth so it's like one for one and eth at the time recording is what about 3300 bucks so these board apes right now i think the floor is like 115 and somebody put a bid in and it ended up selling for the equivalent of about $115 because instead of the bid being actually for uh, in the de denomination of ETH, what was it, the denomination in? Do you remember? Uh, it was uh, DAI. Yeah, XDAI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yes. DAI. So DAI. So he put in, he put in an offer for a, a 115 die, and the holder just, just like wasn't paying attention and assumed that that was ETH and accepted it. And so it sold. Like, that's it. That's it's irreversible. Once it's done, it's done. Like that transaction occurred. Imagine so being so casual. Like I could see being so eager to make that transaction, but you're so casual at the same point and just like cavalier about like, Oh yeah, I'm going to like do a <laughs> like 300 and something thousand dollar. Easy. Yeah, no sure. Brainer. So anyway, like you're, you're in the middle of like drinks and like, Oh yes. So yeah, as you were saying, blah, blah, you know, like, so it's it's out there. I saw I actually saw a dude. Well, it was, um, it's ten ETH over the floor too, right? So like the floor I think was one hundred five, and so this was yeah. one fifteen. He's like, oh, I'm making an extra thirty grand, no brainer. Let me put this in before this he's... guy must really want my board ape and just like, yeah, like sucker. <laughs> Another and one's born. Never I saw born every night. I saw a guy on Twitter, a board ape on Twitter, and he posted a screenshot of one of those offers that he received, and it was like one hundred twenty three die. But what they did is they did 123, 0, 0, 0, 0. They put like enough zeros in there and then a one. So it looks like this big number. So then it looks like you're getting a, a, that amount in die. And you're going to assume like the first one is like a, a comma. So it's like, oh, I'm getting 123,000 die. So if you notice the die, like you'll take it. Because now I believe like on OpenSea, I believe 
they before you can complete the transaction they have the seller verify that they're aware what currency it is because this has be, become a, a pretty uh common scam but the guy posted the screenshot and sarcastically said i'm literally shaking right now life-changing money and everybody like half the people in the comments didn't get it no. they either oh, didn't really? understand what die was and they're like like take it like don't be greedy or other ones were like, don't take that. That's not Ethereum. So That's bad. die. And they didn't get the sarcasm of it, but I thought that was, I thought that was funny. Um, yeah. The An another common one too is, um, so not the currency one. Do you have another currency one you want to say? No, I think I got the best one, but I'll save that one for last. Yeah. So, so another common one that I was seeing a lot of is during mints for some of these NFT projects. Th this sort of goes back to this DM thing. They'll send out DMs or there'd be another website set up where it's a fake mint link. This and so you'll, one, con yeah. you'll connect your wallet to that. It won't be the official mint link for that project and your wallet's connected and they just drained you for whatever it was. So you, you just gave money away for something. Yeah, and so that's one really to be aware of. Be sure you're going to the like official mint link if you're going to mint a project. A lot of times this will be through the Discord channel. Look through the Discord. Make sure you're going through whatever official links they have listed there. You don't want to just be Googling and clicking the first one that looks like the same thing. because Yeah, because even know. in the chats, you're going to have like some Discord scammers. They're going to be posting it in, this, in the chat. And they'll a lot of times they make them look very similar like a .io versus a .com or something like that. Or .xyz, yeah. And then if, if their account in Discord also looks like it's a staff account and you get you think that's an official post, you're going to go for it. The safest thing is finding the links that are in the view only channel. So it's not in an, uh, a channel that could be contributed to by to worry about a it. regular schmuck like us. Yeah. Yeah, so because it. they can even mirror that. Like we said with Discord, you can just change your your avatar and your username to anything. So you can change it to the same thing that the, the main creators of the, the team did. There may be a different color. A lot of times they'll differentiate the team and the founding team with like an orange or red or green. And the normal users will be like a pink or white. But still, it'll be the same. So it's easy to be looking through there and think, oh, yeah, uh, CryptoBot73 says this is the link. So that's the link. It doesn't mean it's the link. Only go yep. to the ones that are official, they're blocked out, they say no comment, or they're sort of like the gray ones at the top on the left that sort of list all the channels. Those are the ones you want to make sure you're getting the accurate official links for. Yeah. And I, I think, do you, do you have any more? I want to save this one for, for the last because I think it's, it's um, the best story, I think. Uh, so I have probably the next... Go into that one because I think I want to just segue this conversation to a slightly different avenue of rug pulls. Okay, this is a this is a we're going to call this one the hacker with the heart of gold. Mm -hmm. So what this hacker did is he went through and took advantage of vulnerabilities in contracts, and I, I think that they have sewn up this gap since discovering this. But here's an example of what he did. Let's say you've got a board ape, and you paid five ETH for it back in the day, whatever price. Let's say you put it up for sale for 15 ETH. Well, now he's got, well, actually, yeah, it, it still works. You put it up for sale for 15 ETH at some point. The sale didn't go through or you took it down or whatever else. Now we fast forward and now let's say that board ape is worth 100 ETH. That hacker was able to go into certain accounts who have previously listed that nft at a price and he was able to exploit a vulnerability in i believe it'd be uh, on the smart contract level where he was able to relist it for a previous price which again we go from 100 eth down to that 15 eth that you put it up for sale six seven a year ago seven months ago whatever and he's able to sell it to himself for that previous price, which you would not accept today. Then he immediately posted them for sale at the floor, executed, got the money. He did that several times, but here's why he's a hacker of a heart with a heart of gold. He kicked back some of the proceeds to the people he did this to. He kicked like 25 ETH back to their account. So while you took that loss from a hundred to zero, he at least gave you, so you technically still made money on it. It's just still not going to, it's not going to be a nice thing to wake up to and realize it's like I had a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred ETH worth of 
Bored Ape, and now I've got 25 ETH in my account. Still, like I said, it's like good news, bad news, good news situation. But yeah. um, I thought that was a very interesting story. I would buy the guy That's of the year. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like he forced you to sell. Because here's the argument. What happens if the board apes for some reason crash tomorrow? We don't know. You don't think they're going to, but they could have. And what if it went back down to five? That guy would have prayed that somebody hacked his account, sold it for, you know, 70 and gave him 25, you know? So, yeah. yeah it's hacker a with the heart of gold. Hacker with the heart of gold. Good story. Cautionary tale. Um, not everything, you know, is going to be a negative. Nothing's going to be a positive. What sucks about that? There's nothing you can do. That the the board AP owner owner did nothing wrong. That was yeah. a vulnerability in the system, which hopefully there aren't any of those left. Yeah, and and so that's sort of some other points too. So we can sort of segue out of these on you buyer beware type issues. So there's there's been a lot of documentaries coming out. I don't know if you saw KC, the Crypto King documentary on Netflix. Which is all about that um, this guy from Canada. His name's With Gerald the, Cotton, Quadriga oh no. CX. Yeah, so he had he had a uh, Dutch, no, not he's Dutch. Canadian. Oh, no, this no. is a Canadian dude. He was there for the 2013 boom, and he started an exchange. It was a really successful ex exchange in Canada, and then at one point he just drained it, faked his death, and took off. <laughs> As so he took does. off. Yeah. So he took off with like you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. It was right during. Oh, this was actually at the crash. I think this was the 2016, 2017 crash. So he may have been doing some sort of Ponzi scheme or something like that. I'm about halfway through, but like that's a cautionary tale. What's it on? I, Netflix? I mean, yeah, I think it's a Netflix one. It's super okay. interesting. But that's again just just being aware of where you're putting your money. I think that's a big reason why a lot of people trust Coinbase right now because they were such a dominant player during that crash in 2017 and they survived it. They, everyone, they made everyone whole. No one had any issues. No one lost money. So even though they're not, they're custodial and like they, they're holding your keys, they were shown to be trustworthy through a really tumultuous time. And it just sort of anti-fragile. Now so that, Coinbase I saw is uh there, I think it's FTC, FTC, FDIC insured up to a million dollars. Do you know what other exchanges are? I don't think they're unique. I think Celsius is as well. But do you know who else is and well, what FDIC accounts? is a banking. So that's a good question. I, I can't answer that right now. I have to do a little Maybe bit of research and figure out. Okay. Yeah, FDIC is a deposit for for banks. So it's yeah, so, so would they not like maybe it's just a, a separate type of insurance that they have? Maybe it's not so, FDIC. I thought well, it was. I, I think Coinbase may be a bank. So I think if, okay. if you have dollars stored there, I don't know if your Bitcoin is, but any dollar deposit stored may be insured at Coinbase. Um, I, I think they did set up a bank, but that's one that I'd like to do a little bit of research before we actually dive in any substance. And, and get into details on. All right, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. And but another cool one, which if any of you guys you know listen to some of the other podcasts out there, there's been a book recently written um, called uh, "The Cryptopians." So it, it's a really cool book written by Laura Shin, who hosts a podcast on crypto, and it's about the guy that hacked the DAO, which was. Like one of the first iterations of the DAO, and he essentially caused them to fork Ethereum. Yeah. So he held it onto Ethereum Classic, and that's the reason they forked it, more or less, because he had all of this, all these tokens. He had like four million tokens of ETH, and then they had to fork it to just make his worthless. And so he was a guy that ran this thing called 10X, which was its own crypto thing. And I think and I know who it is. Yeah, it's, to Grant, Toby. it's Grant Connect and Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. Oh, he'll sue us now. <laughs> Grant no, Cardone, no. it's not you, bud. It's not he, Grant. Grant, Grant Cardone, is, he's uh, headlining the Miami NFT week. This week. Yeah. What's funny is he was very um, anti like Bitcoin. I remember him saying like, he's a bandwagon you, guy. You can, you can pay me in it and like, I'm going to just turn around and sell it. I buy houses. I'm curious to see how he works real estate into... And not to knock him, that's that's what he does. Like if if, if I sold shoes, I'd be talking about nothing but shoes. Um, but I, I'm I'm gonna be curious to see how he works in real estate in the uh, crypto thing. It'll probably be make sure you buy houses before you buy crypto. So you have, especially you know, 
invest in my REIT. So you have maybe cash he's just flow. Gonna, maybe he's just gonna pivot. You know, nothing says he, that he has he to stay do, in the real estate thing for it, dude. I would love to be able to get hit like to to fil- facilitate some NFT or any kind of. I've got a few ideas for some Web three projects. I'd love to get you know Grant in on, but uh, because th- he's got so much potential with that audience and what he's already into, but. Another South Florida guy. Oh, and one thing too, just going back to some of the ones that be on your own due diligence for, like when you're talking about the Discord possible scams, there's some some third party applications that are used for verification that you are, let's say, like a, a token holder or an NFT holder, and they use those to verify that to get your your access on Discord next to that like holder level. So Collabland's one of those. It's always skeptical. Like I'm always skeptical when I'm redirected to a third party and I have to link my my wallet to something like that. Make well, sure is you have to do that so often yeah, that it becomes just a routine thing. You and don't it, think about it. And it, it shouldn't be. Like you have to make sure every time you do that, you're hyper aware. You're looking at the domain name. And MetaMask holding. should make it so that if if you're about to click something that is uh, approval of a transaction, it should look remarkably different than what it looks like when I'm signing into, because there's some places in, in, in dis, uh, in a uh, Decentraland, when you walk into certain places to be recognized for the NFT or whatever else you have to, you know, sign in and the MetaMask pops up and you agree, or even just to sign into Decentraland. It's another place where you have to sign in through your MetaMask. They should make it look remarkably different. So there's like, no, oops, I clicked the wrong thing out of habit. Yeah. But they don't. And so that's on you, on you to be aware of that. Some good precautions to take are set up a dummy MetaMask account or Hotwall account that has nothing in it. If you're testing something out and you're not sure, don't use anything you have anything of value in. Log in first with a separate account. They're unlimited. You can make as many as you want and log in just to make sure that that nothing's fishy. Yeah, that's what I've I've got to do. I've I've been thinking about that. I did set up, actually I did do it. I set up a second MetaMask account and I don't know what I did with the seed phrase. So thankfully I've only got one NFT in it because I I sent it to myself. And then I was like, wait, I Mm. can't send it out because I can access it only through the OpenSea app, but through the OpenSea app, you can't send or sell or buy or do anything. You could just view what's on OpenSea and see what's in your wallet. So I can see my NFT. I just can't do anything with it because the only place I could log in is through an app that won't let me do anything with it. So so, so you just brought up a good point there. You lost your seed phrase. So it's really important. Put your seed phrases in the comment. No, ju- just kidding. Don't <laughs> give your seed phrase to anybody. Yeah. So the, the seed phrase, just to back up, is that like chain of sometimes it's 10, 12, 12. 16. It, it's, it's a whole bunch. Sometimes 32. It's just a whole bunch of random words. Sometimes they're like down one column, down the other. They're in a row. Never odd numbers. Always even. And it's really important you keep those in some sort of like physical form. Don't don't store them electronically unless don't it's on email some them sort of yourself. device. Never, yeah. never email yourself. Do not put it on a cloud. If you do store it electronically, store it on something that you do not connect to the internet, like an old laptop that you've wiped everything off of and it's just something that you keep tucked away somewhere and you're safe. Ideally, keep it in physical form. There's a lot of cool metal boxes that you can etch in the letters and you can lock it in. You put a little lock on it. Those are really cool. There may be overkill. You can write it down, put it in a safe, put it in a, a fireproof pouch. Tattoo, you know? Mm, yeah, because you get drunk, someone can see it. That's the point. That's the point. Want to see my seed phrase? <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you keep it secure, but keep it in a physical place, so- somewhere that only you know that you have access to. Maybe you can put in your will so you know your wife or family can find it if something happens to you. But also, we just mentioned some other like wallets. It's good to get a ledger. Uh, I have a ledger. It's got, uh, We got a couple ledgers. We bought them a few years ago. Yeah. Solid solid buy. Solid buy. It, you, you know what? Let's do a giveaway at some point too for them. Some, sometimes yeah. no. we'll give away a ledger. We'll do a... Actually, in, we'll do a, we're going to do a raffle for a few different things. Um, we'll do it for the ledger. We're giving out free NFTs for everyone who submits the contact form. We're also going to do a raffle for some NFTs. And uh, another thing will be a crypto miner. Um, so fill oh, out sure. the form. We'll have more details in future episodes and try to you know build up an event for that. But uh, yeah, you'll at least get a free NFT for filling out the form. So do that. But so yeah, I think I, I a want... wallet would be right in line with what we're doing. Maybe a few yeah. wallets. 
yeah, we wallets are something I think just benefit everyone too. So if we could yeah. just get those out there, it just will encourage people to make sure they use it. The more we talk about and give it out, the more hopefully be top of mind for you guys. Um, yeah. But I want I want to pivot to the one last topic we're going to talk about for for scams: rug pulls. So rug pull is a term. We said that we're going to help define terms. Rug pull is a term that's used for people that don't deliver that promise something and then they just run away. It's sort of like the classic con man thing. Well, it's big here, especially in these NFT spaces. So we we did a podcast recently and a YouTube video on utility. Utility is a big aspect for NFTs because if it's more than just a little picture, you want something out of it. But with that, you're trusting whoever's behind that project to follow through on the execution of that project and this is where the rug pull comes in because it's oh so common that you'll have every tom dick and harry out there creating some project that's just a rip off of some other project but they promise the world in the utility their roadmap looks unbelievable they're going to buy a yacht and they're going to throw the best parties and then it's going to be a key to a casino and they're going to reinvest all the proceeds into the dow and everyone's going to get 10 times their money the first year like, it, it sounds great Chances are it's not going to happen, especially if they're anonymous people. And so a rug pull is the term that's used because they're pulling the rug out from underneath you to describe whoever does that promises the world or promises anything and doesn't deliver. And so we can go into what some of the possible things to look like are for that, how to avoid it, some things just to be aware of in your due diligence. But I want to share a story that came out recently here this year. So March 24th, 2022, the... Southern District of New York, U.S. attorney, came out and came out hard on some rug pullers. So Frosties was this NFT collection that had happened just like just what we described. They were like little fun NFTs, but they had this massive utility that they planned. Not long after they minted, they made millions of dollars in the mint and they took off, did nothing. And so like it, it seems almost like, yeah, you know, that's that's part of the risk. Right. And it is. But they're actually getting serious with this. It, this is something I'm really encouraged to see, Casey. We're yeah. now seeing the U.S. attorney coming after these people. And so they came out at the beginning of the year and pressed charges against them. I mean, they're facing up to 20 years on some of these charges. So they have conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering for the scheme. So that's how you get them. Like, it's not the actual illegal part for this overpromise and underdeliver thing, because it's not a security. You don't have these same sort of issues and stuff. But how they got them was they were going back and they were transferring all the money back and forth to themselves that they received through this sort of uh, fraudulent scheme. And there's enough people that were pissed off that the uh, U.S. attorney was like, no, we're going to do something about this. We need to make examples of these people. So they're facing up to 20 years for each of these charges. Man, yeah, it's not worth it when you get caught. No, no, I think it's great. Like this, this is what we need. We need some sort of accountability yeah. for these rug pullers. And so, Casey, do you want to talk a little bit about what to look for and what you look for when you are evaluating some of these projects to avoid the rug pull? Sometimes well, unavoidable, but one, one thing I, I look for when I'm getting into uh, well, the 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 three things I always mention I look for when looking to get into an nft are brand recognition the community and the utility so the brand recognition is really going to be a major important thing because the community that could be a bunch of people who are also getting duped there's a bunch of people on discord who are also getting duped by you seeing a lot of active admins in the community kind of makes it a bit better a utility that's actually already somewhat in, you know, it's already come to fruition or it's definitely something that can come to fruition. But the fourth thing in this context is going to be the team. As John mentioned, the team being doxed and doxed is a term that means it's documented. It's there's public documentation to tell you who these people are, tell you about them. Ideally, I didn't realize that's what that's derived from. I, I, I had no clue. Oh, I, I believe I, 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 I just, it was a gamer true. term when, when you dock somebody, you know, that was playing and you just sort of put all their information on blast. Oh, yeah. It makes sense. That's I didn't realize I that was... it was. Yeah. I, I might be wrong. So we'll put a little asterisk on that, but that ideally I'm going to see a real picture of you. A lot of people are using profile pictures. I'm going to see your real name 
And most that. importantly, I can make any of that stuff up. I can make up a name. I can grab a random picture of somebody else. I can make up a really impressive bio, but I want to see a LinkedIn and y'all want to go through your LinkedIn and I want it to match with everything. I want it to be something that's aged. It's been around. It's not just a few months old. And I want to make sure that if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, when you put down that you have a specialty in SEO or marketing or graphic design or whatever it is, other people who know you on LinkedIn are going to like sign off on that. They're going to certify like, yeah, Casey knows about, you know, marketing. Casey knows. Sometimes about that's SEO. BS though, right? Like it's just like, it buddies. like, oh yeah, Casey's really good at, uh, at like lion taming or something like that. Like that's my boy. Yeah. But, yeah. but if you yeah, see, if you see on. none, or if you see the only people who are verifying that are other LinkedIn accounts who are associated with that, 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 that project, which I've seen, yeah. there's one that I showed you, uh, months ago, maybe even further back than that, which was the, um, Ethroll. Ethroll.io was a, it was going to be a cryptocurrency casino. And at that time I was just getting into metaverse and I was like, this is going to be great. People love to gamble. This is a way for you to own a piece of a casino. And I was all about it. Now, fortunately I was able to get just some free crypto. I didn't actually invest any in it, but I was very, very close to like throwing in my own money. Fortunately, since I have some YouTube accounts and uh, I'm able to like, you know, show projects to audiences, I was able to get some free stuff and I kind of got some, you know, some suspicions before him. Yeah. They, they were too willing to just give me free crypto number one. And I just like, I told them I was going to spend $2,000 with them uh, when I bought it. And when I was, I was like, yeah, I was thinking about buying some for 2000. So they ended up giving me what was equivalent to $2,000 worth of their crypto. And I was like, that's way too easy for you to do. So then I looked into them and when I went on LinkedIn and I felt good that they had their LinkedIn documentation, I saw that they were all the only ones verifying each other on LinkedIn. So they were the only ones saying like, yeah, he knows this. Yeah, he's done that. And the projects that they had, even the background they had, like some of them had projects that were crypto related. One guy worked for uh, multiple uh, cas uh, online casinos already. So he knew online casino world. He knew crypto and he was the CEO. I'm not going to name him because I still don't know if that was legit or not, but that ended up being a rug pull. But these are people I spoke to on Telegram. I went back and forth with them about the website. So these scammers were extremely convincing. Right. And it, I did all of my due diligence. And aside from those little details, like them being the only ones who were vetting each other and their project not really being listed anywhere. Like you could see an article on Medium dot com but i'll give you you know a bit of Maybe. advice anybody could put an article about anything on medium mm -hmm. they just want content they want views and if you're going to generate content submit an article they're going to put it up and nothing falls back on them for putting that bs article up so there's there's material out there on these third-party sites so it looks legit but by thoroughly going through that's when i saw the red flags but before that man they are very convincing but if they have a project that's already out, makes you feel a little bit better. If you can verify who the people are, if they're live, if they're going live, doing live streams, they're getting in front of the camera or they're it's accessible. someone's actual face. That's very yeah. helpful. It doesn't mean it's legitimate, but that is a step further than a lot of people are willing to take yeah. because now you're seeing a face behind the, the, the project. And it's it, especially if they have a LinkedIn, because now you have that face. If they're saying that they were someone high up in a company, well, chances are that then there was a profile and you can match then that real face that you're talking to now with that person. They're just not impersonating someone and using their background. We're all seeing like Tinder Swindler and Anna Delvey and all these things. Like people can go to some lengths to do some fraud. So even if you're seeing a face, it doesn't mean that they're legitimate, but it is just one more step of verification that a lot of people won't take. And so it's just at least the bare minimum you need to do. I've seen people show their passports which I don't think is necessary, but you know, God bless you. If you're willing to do that, like I appreciate you. Yeah. And I mean, with, with the a terrain or an industry that is so Fraud saturated, yeah. Yeah. With scams. Um, it, it, it does help, especially if you're kind of a nobody, because there are some projects who have some nobodies with legit abilities and intentions. They just don't have the track record. So a lot of people are probably overlooking them and not to say that that's not right. You know, or yeah, 
Yeah, not I mean, who's Satoshi? Like, like, no one knows who Satoshi is. But the beauty of, of that was you weren't relying on him for something that was outside of what you saw. Yeah. He sh you have the white paper, right? Like the yeah. white paper was a proof of work. That's all you need. And so you don't necessarily need doxing for some of these pro projects. Some of them, especially if there's no utility, then what does it matter who they are? If, if it's just the artwork, you like the artwork, and then the community seems cool, and that's the reason you're getting it is because of the community, then it doesn't really matter because they can't rug pull if there's no promise on the, the back end. It's when there's a promise, when that they're looking to execute on something. Because now at this point, they're essentially a business. This is a startup. And you have to think of this like an investor. Even though it's not an investment, you're not investing in something, you have to think of it that same way. And so the way investors look at early stage founders, first, of course, they want to know who they are and they want to know what they've done. So you want to see a background if it's, if it's relevant to what they're promising. Sometimes the promise is just, you know, we're going to reinvest money. So great. You just want to make sure they're semi-trustworthy. But if they're saying that they're going to do something, if they're going to execute, if they're going to innovate, you have to create. make sure that they're going to create. You want to see that they have the background or experience that lends you to believe that they are capable of doing that. Yeah. And so that could be, you know, they've worked on another project. They don't have to have. That could be that they have a marketing background if they're promising, you know, that we're going to market this or a sales background, or event background. If they say we're going to put on the best parties, if they like, you know, we're a, a club promoter, that may be enough. If they worked as a, a you know, live nation a, event promoter, cool. Event planner, if they did PR, stuff like that are just little things that you need to do to do some due diligence. Ideally, you want to see that they did projects before. You want to see that they have sort of some brand names stamped to them. Because all that serves as a signal that someone trusted them and put them in a position and they could execute at a high level. What's nice too is if they've worked together as a team. This is a lot of times how investors look at founders. If you have a team of people, you don't know that they can work together. So if they've done something together, they have a track record, a history of being able to cooperate and come together and make the, the individual pieces greater than the sum of parts. Most parts, yeah. Or make the sum greater than the, the the individual pieces. Sorry, I was getting a call then, so everything got uh, all wonky. Yeah, a little shot. That's all valuable. Yeah, that's all valuable. Whatever due diligence you can see from whoever it is that's doing it, if it is needed, you should do. It, it doesn't mean that it's still not going to be a rug pull. It can be. They could be impersonating some. They could be real people and decide. You know, we got a yeah. lot of money in the bank. We're going to walk away. Like the guy I told you about, Gerald Cotton. He was a real dude that started a real exchange. He still walked away with the money. Yeah, right? you just <laughs> move to a place that doesn't ex extradite, or you just you just lose it in a in a, a you lose your wallet. You're like, oh, I put all the crypto on this wallet, and I lost in a boating accident. I guess I'm going to do my ten years, get you know three years with good behavior, and I'm going to find that wallet all of a sudden, and time's already served. I mean, you get enough money, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's always an incentive for somebody to do something with nefarious and the, the, how much trust you're putting in them should dictate how much skepticism you have and how much you need to do a little bit more research into them. If it's just a nice community, roll with it. If it's kind of like a, a cheesy utility, like, yeah, you know, we're going to put like 5% of everything back in and we're going to have some cool parties. Like, I'd, I'd want to see that they had a social media presence, at least that there was some sort of accountability there and not something they just started. If they have like an Instagram account with 50,000 followers, all right, like you got something to lose. You know, you have a soul, you have a reputation. Maybe I don't even know what your name is, but you have an alias that is worth something to you. And so just as long as people have skin in the game, that can scale up and down based on the amount of risk that you're comfortable with. But you should do some due diligence and make sure they have skin in the game. And this is why their identity out there is helpful because they have a reputation and you can just drag it through the mud. And, and before, uh, uh, before we wrap it up, one thing I, I'm thinking we should do in a future episode is maybe we'll walk through how to vet a DAO because one, one thing I'm seeing a lot of is everyone's claiming they've got a DAO or if they're not saying a DAO, they're explaining uh, or describing a utility, an intention for a utility that is very similar to a DAO. And while this all sounds well and good and it's very easily accepted by somebody because there are a lot of legit projects doing this. So it's like, Oh, it's just like XYZ project. Oh, they're going to do this. 
I want to be able to figure in, and help the audience figure out how to dissect the and do the proper due diligence to figure out cool. that buying this NFT is going to give you some kind of a claim. There is going to be, you know, the right procedures and protocol put in place, if that's even possible. I haven't even looked into it that much. I've just been very cautious of, of anybody who said that. I'm making no, small investments. I think it's good. Few I, I think it's good. But, yeah, yeah. I, you should always test the waters with everything. And I guess that's sort of general advice. Whenever you do sort of transactions, or transfers, do like a test one first. Yeah. Just to make sure. And so and, always test the waters. But I think that's good. We should do some walkthroughs. Super helpful for people. I know it was helpful for me early on to just pop on YouTube and just see things. Sometimes reading it or hearing it isn't the best thing. You need to actually see it and see how you walk through it. So yeah. let's let's do that. I like it. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up uh, for this episode. It's wrap it up. And, wrap uh, it up. Not even going to have an outro. Just going to. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to make sure you don't forget to check out the information and the links in the show notes. Some of that stuff is going to get you into freebies and raffles and contests and all sorts of other promotions. But also, we've got a private group dedicated to our listeners and our followers. We would love to see you there. Love to see you collaborate, join, and get exclusive content that we are only distributing through these other means. Speaking of distributing through other means, I want to make sure that you're also subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and again, join that private group so you know everything that we know as soon as we know it. 